Returning from the Pantanal back to Kiaba, the last part of our trip took us west to the Serra das Araras. Although considered part of the Cerrado, the habitat felt different to that at Chapada. The escarpments are surrounded by humid forest as well as savanna, producing an avifauna which owes its heritage to the Amazon as much as the Cerrado. Our base for three nights here was the Kurupura Lodge. The lodge is halfway along a valley that has been famous in recent years for breeding harpy eagles. Before we arrived, however, we were told that the eagles had not been seen for nearly six months. We nonetheless visited the deserted nest site. Quite incredibly though, a male was found by our guide Ricardo Casarin as we retraced our steps. It was this male that was last seen some months ago. Encouragingly, it was not far from the nest site. The whereabouts of the female are open to conjecture, and given their rarity and the enormity of their territories, if she is dead, it may take some time for him to find another mate. The track to and from the nest site was great for other birds too, like swallow-winged puffbird, which proved to be reasonably common in open habitats. White-eared puffbirds. Unlike those seen at Chapada, these are of the paler western race. yellow tufted woodpeckers which proved easy to see. Like other members of the Melanerpes family of woodpeckers, they are very sociable. Red on the crown identifies this as a male. A male black-tailed trogon, a species more typically associated with the Amazon region. fork-tailed flycatcher. A charming flock of brown jacamars. Races differ in the colour of the underparts, bill and eye. All these birds showed the white breast and yellow bill of the southern race, but not the expected pale bluish eye unless they all happen to be juveniles. A party of lettered arasaris with two black-headed males and three chestnut-headed females. Chestnut-eared arasari. And a superb toko toucan. a feeding flock of dusky-headed parakeets. They are part of a relict population here, quite separated from the main range to the north and west in the true Amazonian regions. Although not treated as a subspecies, these showed only a hint of blue in the wings and tail, unlike the nominate form. Other members of the parrot family here were white-eyed parakeets, common and widespread and seemingly always in feeding flocks.
this pair of orange-winged Amazons and blue-headed parrots. Raptors included roadside hawks. A very obliging male American kestrel. And a pair of laughing falcons calling to each other. Halfway along the track was a small pool, home to a family of leased grebes. The larger sized adults also showed a brighter yellow eye. It was also a drinking spot for the local horses. Early starts made the most of the cooler hours. Usually one of the first birds to be seen by the lodge was a regular ferruginous pygmy owl. Despite their name, they are not all reddish coloured, and this one was at the browner end of the scale. Across the approach track from the lodge was a shallow lake. Here we found white-faced whistling ducks. a pair of Brazilian teal. The male is at the front, and here on the right. A roost of cattle egrets. A green ibis, a shy species not normally seen out in the open. And a few buff-necked ibis. This trio was presumably a family and was seen elsewhere near the lodge. More open ground around the lake was also good for land birds early morning, with short crested flycatchers, identified by the all dark bill and lack of rufous in the wings and tail. Black throated saltator. spiky-haired Guira cuckoos. A female white-wedged piculate. A rufous hornero in the process of building its oven-like nest. Black-capped Donacobius. A scaled pigeon a male black-crowned Chitaira, a male chestnut-bellied seedfinch, rather agitated at the call of a pygmy owl, and a largely concealed variable oriole. There was also a small troop of black-tailed marmosets, of which only this one showed particularly well. The middle of the day was spent back at the lodge. Despite the heat, birds were still on show, with red-shouldered macaws, 
and white-eyed parakeets in the mango trees. A small patch of woodland proved to be a revelation, producing a female little woodpecker. Buff-throated woodcreeper. An aptly named magpie tanager. A black fronted nunbird. A surprisingly confiding and calling female blue crowned trogon. And best of all, a male helmeted mannequin. They are only one of two Antilophia mannequins in the world, the other being the Araripe mannequin, restricted to a tiny zone in northeast Brazil. In the afternoons we explored an area of pastures, cultivation and open woodland to the northwest of the lodge. On the way on the first visit we found this magnificent black and white hawk eagle. It had caught something and eventually took flight with the prey still in its talons. A long dirt track took us through an extensive area of cattle ranches. The fields by the road hosted great arrears. two regular pairs of burrowing owls. They seemed quite content as long as we stayed in our van. A rather distant grey mongita. and a much more confiding wedge-tailed grass finch. An area of scattered woodland revealed this red-throated piping guan feeding in a cecropia tree. A recent split, even this form is sometimes considered a separate species, named not surprisingly white-headed piping guan. and this blue and yellow macaw was in a nearby palm tree. Further along the track was a good area of scrub and woodland. Here we saw our first and only dull-capped Attila. They also go by the name of white-eyed Attila. A skulking moustached wren. And in the larger trees across the other side of the track, a pair of crimson crested woodpeckers were busily foraging. The male has pretty much an all red head. Whereas the female has black on the forehead and crown, plus a white stripe across the face. With undulated tinamous continuing to call in the background, the sun dipped below the tree line and we were treated to some gorgeous sunsets.